In this video, I'm going to be talking about the top 13 scariest moments from films that were targeted to kids. I would say that the first level of horror fan evolution consists of trippy psychedelic spectacles like the pink elephants on parade from Dumbo, or haunting dreamy plunges into the underworld like Night on Bald Mountain from Fantasia. And hopefully these scenes uh, prepared kids for the 13 I'm going to talk about right now. And these scenes I would say either traumatized the poor kitties or made them eager to take off their training wheels and delve further into uh, the horror genre with films like The Gate, The Burbs, Bride of Frankenstein, The Monster Squad, Jaws, stuff like that. Um, and so obviously this list is completely subjective. These are all scenes that scared me when I was a kid. And uh, so yeah, please let me know what scenes I should have included. Based on a novel from 1980, this animated musical comedy is about how electrical appliances have lives of their own when their owners are not around, but just like in Toy Story, they become devastated if they feel like they've been abandoned by their owners. It's pretty harmless stuff until a scene comes when the Sandman visits the toaster and gives him one hell of a fright. What gets me about this scene is how it starts off with a perfect demonstration of silly childhood innocence. But then suddenly panic sets in, opening the doors for unrelenting psychotic terror in the form of fires, black clouds of smoke that literally choke you, forks that want to stab you, and a menacing clown that mocks you as you run for your dear life. I wouldn't have included this entry had I not just revisited The Princess Bride for the first time in many years. It was probably my fifth time seeing this fun and uplifting movie, and it was strange how certain parts seemed so much darker than I remembered. As creepy as the nighttime man-eating eels are, the part that I found the most chilling was Wesley's torture by Christopher Guest's machine, which was hyped up as being capable of delivering more pain and misery than any man could do to another. The way the six-fingered sadist coldly reacts to Wesley's sobs made the scene even more intense. It just wouldn't be a Disney classic without at least one ominous and hypnotically creepy scene. After narrowly escaping death, Snow White runs through the ultimate haunted forest, and is greeted by owls, howling winds, hungry crocodiles, swarms of dead leaves and bats, illuminated ghastly faces, and the kind of perverted trees that you associate with the evil dead. This was one of my childhood favorites, so it was appropriate that for 13 years I had a black and white cat named Figaro. While Pinocchio is enjoying some beer and a cigar in a tavern, his buddy undergoes a transformation reminiscent of an American werewolf in London and the fly. It starts out fairly silly with some big ears and a tail, but once he looks in the mirror, he goes into full panic mode as he screams for help and fights against his rapidly changing body. Pinocchio can only look on in horror as he waits for his own cruel metamorphosis to commence. For all I know, the man-eating whale in Pinocchio is what made me want to see Jaws at such a young age. This movie is loaded with intense and upsetting moments that people who saw it as kids never forgot about, but I'm sure these days they're happily showing it to their own kids. If I had to single out one scene as being especially scary, I'd go with that damn Gamork and its humongous fangs. Accompanying this wolf creature's introduction are deep growls and piercing strings, and then when it starts talking, it becomes even more horrifying. You wouldn't expect a G-rated 1968 film starring Dick Van Dyke as an inventor of a flying car to have a scene this unsettling. The fear of abandonment, imprisonment, and big scary adults was exploited so powerfully when the jester costume man who promises free ice cream and chocolate to the kitty winkies slams the door shut and laughs maniacally as all the cute decorations suddenly come crashing down to reveal a cage. I recently got to see this in a movie theater pub and the crowd, consisting of mostly people in their 20s and 30s, started giggling the moment those insanely bright headlights shone on a hitchhiking peewee. They knew what was coming and the excitement in the theater kept growing until that one moment. The scene reminds me of many tales in the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark trilogy where a short story gets increasingly suspenseful until the narrator screams, prompting the listeners to shriek and then giggle. The Witches is remembered fondly for showing people at a young age just how much fun it could be to be scared. Based on Roald Dahl's 1983 children's fantasy book, the Witches feels very much like a grim fairy tale due to how face peeling and talking mice can appear together in the same scene. It was the final film that Jim Henson worked on before he passed away, and you couldn't ask for a more appropriate swan song because it's full of the awe-inspiring puppetry and light-hearted whimsy that he was known for. It's a shame that he had to spend one of his final days writing an apologetic letter to Roald Dahl after the author hated the movie so much that he demanded, for a while, all associations with the book be removed, including the title. 
Many people would consider Bruno's mouse transformation to be the film's creepiest moment, but to me it's always been the scene in which Angelica Houston instructs her fellow witches to remove their shoes and wigs, and then ever so slowly peels off her face to reveal something shockingly hideous underneath. The scene is made creepier with extreme close-ups, quick cuts, and a pounding score that grows louder and louder. I love the way that the camera playfully roams around the faces of the women during this transformation scene because the splendid prosthetics and makeup effects are worth showing off in as much detail as possible. No list about creepy scenes could be complete without one of the most famous freak fests in film history, and considering how much it has been covered over the years, there's nothing I can say that you haven't already heard. But let me reiterate just how awesome it is how nothing prepares you for what happens when the riverboat sails down the chocolate tunnel. And before you know it, you're trapped in the scariest bad acid trip imaginable, abound with dizzying psychedelic lighting, random shots of creepy crawlies, and the ramblings of a lunatic. Once I saw this very special movie, one of the first to ever receive a PG-13 rating, I was never able to hear the song Do You Hear What I Hear without feeling a sense of dread and impending doom. The film is for the most part very playful, cute, and goofy, but this Christmas tree attack offers a refreshing slice of pure animalistic viciousness to your holiday season year after year. And just like Pinocchio inspired the name of my first cat, Figaro, this movie gave me the perfect name for his brother, Gizmo. I was debating whether or not to include another Joe Dante masterpiece to this list, but I ultimately decided that even though it was rated PG, The Burbs is more of a horror comedy than a family film. This is still my all-time favorite movie opening, and every time I see it, I notice new details to appreciate. The New York Public Library serves as such an ideal horror setting, with its maze-like rows of dusty books, and where just a mere footstep or whisper packs a powerful punch. It's still a spellbinding moment for me whenever that floating library apparition first appears, and when she looks over to Peter and tells him to shh. The severe chills I felt as a child seeing it for the first time return immediately. There is no shortage of shocking moments in this movie that was inexplicably marketed to children. Right from the start, it shows off a real mean streak by having little Dorothy in an institution awaiting electroshock therapy on a dark and stormy night. Later on, the cackling Wheeler monsters that chased Dorothy around had a proper go at weeding out the audience, forcing parents to remove their sobbing children from the theater. The remaining kids were tested further when Dorothy tiptoes in a spooky mansion and awakens a bunch of severed heads that were furious that their slumber had been disturbed. It's a flawed movie for sure, and often a clumsy one, but I have to give it some credit for being so goddamn uncompromising and bizarre, and certain scenes are still very intense to this day. And I try to avoid having repeats on my list, so I'm not talking about the same movies over and over. So that's the reason why the peanut butter solution is not going to be in this video. But if you want to learn more about that one, um, which is one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen and I wish I had never seen it, then you can watch a video that I made last year called the top 10 strangest movies I've ever seen and I will post a link to that video at the end of this one. All my life I've suffered from arachnophobia so I hope you'll understand why I'm not going to show this particular scene, which is one of the scariest I've seen involving these eight-legged freaks. Something Wicked This Way Comes is mostly faithful to Ray Bradbury's brilliant novel about a spooky carnival barker that preys upon people's lost youth and deepest regrets, but this scene was added to uh, obviously provide another top-notch scare, and holy shit does it succeed. Pretty soon I'm going to be able to announce some really cool news. I can't say anything about it just yet, but uh, please stay tuned for that. It's a long time in the making. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.